Dana White was on with Greeny while the Howard Stern Tom Brady conversation was uh, happening. So I would say less than 100 people heard that interview. Uh, mm -hmm. We have two people in this room that heard it because, yeah. and I kind of feel like we, I forced Connor to stop making noise in the middle of the Tom Brady Howard Stern. Oh, he, oh, he, oh, he loves his dad. That's what Connor was saying during this entire Howard Stern Tom. Oh, 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 he loves his, oh, his kids. Oh. Oh, he cried? Oh, 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 team guy, huh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, the guy took a pay cut for 20 years. Oh, that guy. <laughs> now I want 30 million. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was what you were saying. So I was like, somebody has to go listen to this Dana White greenie. So we shipped Connor off to do it. And also Ty listened, because Ty has this incredible ability to listen to multiple things at the same time and not skip a beat, by the way. He's like a guy that reads a book that skips lines in the book and just can pick it up. And that's why he was accepted to Harvard. But ultimately, the reason why he's working for us because he turned that down to go to Iowa. Yeah, so that's great school. That's kind of I feel like I just I kind of wrapped the entire Ty Schmidt brain up into one thing there. But there was nothing said in that interview. right? No, not really. I mean, you think Dana was pissed? You think Dana was pissed that he was scheduled to do that conversation in the middle of the Tom Brady Howard Stern? Possibly. Is that what it felt like and sounded like? It, it, it looked like he's very tired of getting asked the same questions about this and like taking it on the shins for like, well, what about like these medical professionals who say they're they're being pulled away? It, the, his whole his basically what he always came back to was this fight is happening. It's going to be on ESPN. Don't ask me where the island is. I'm not going to tell you. Don't ask me about all the political <laughs> stuff. Don't want to get into it. It's a waste of time. It basically just came back to this is the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's happening on April 18th somewhere. Hardest thing ever. This guy, people, people do not appreciate Dana White enough. I don't think. Dude was homeless at one point, right? Yeah, lived in his car. Whitey was after him. Whitey Bolger wanted <laughs> yeah. him at some point. Then he goes. He's training people. He becomes friends with the Fertitta brothers or whatever. He tells them, hey, I got an idea. I got an idea. They probably weren't in on it at the beginning because it was a million-dollar investment. He's like, I got an idea. I got it. Just come on. Just let's do it. They buy UFC for a million. Now it sells for, what, two and a half billion or something yeah. like that? Now he just has hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's still, by the way, working every single day at, it, at this point, just like what Howard Stern said to Tom Brady. What, you, you've got six Super Bowls. You've done this for 20 years. You're filthy rich. You've accomplished everything. Why are you still doing it? And Tom's like, well, you don't question musicians and this. Thing. I just love what I do. Dana White feels like a guy that absolutely loves mixed martial arts, and he has a good business mind, and he's a savage. Dana White is a savage. It does not matter who you are. Mike Greenberg's in two Hall of Fames. Mm -hmm. Greeny was trying to get some real information out of him. In a couple of clips that both you and Connor sent over, he was like, nah. nah. <laughs> Stonewalled and big nah. time. Greeny, like, I, I, I wish in his head he was saying, I appreciate what you're doing and I respect you, but nah. I'm just, I'm worth a couple hundred million. This business is worth two and a half billion. After UFC sold out, did he have to stay contracted? Yeah, I think they contracted him to remain at president. Right? It's his life. I but don't think he wanted to. I don't know. Well, like, do you think there was written in there like, hey, when WME buys it, we want Dana White in his office eight hours a day. <laughs> like, do you think that was something in there? And Dana White probably saw how many hundreds of millions he was going to get. And I was like, yeah, I'll go sit in my office for eight hours. Like, I wonder what the extent of it is and how long he'll go for. But I just love how savage he is. And he, I, he did say what you've been echoing is like he feels a responsibility right now that people need some form of entertainment otherwise they're gonna go crazy people love that mm if you're in the ufc you love the ufc i'll take shots at you by the way i probably watch the same amount of pay-per-view fights i don't watch the week-to-week -week stuff and i don't watch behind the scenes stuff but if i hear a fight's happening and it shows i'm like yeah I'm, I'm gonna get this like i'm gonna go ahead and get this and watch this and by the conor mcgregor brought me into it a little bit more because he was just an electric factory you know i mean listening to a little irish guy just talk about how he's gonna kill people red panties out. yeah yeah right <laughs> you you tell your wife you hit the lottery you get the red panties and when he's stealing people's belts i mean it just i've been a lifelong wwe fan so whenever that started happening i'm like all right here we go and then once you just you start meeting them i mean you meet like matreon and lytle mm. and these professional fighters i got a chance to meet that guy in Ohio. Uh, he was Steve Miocic. Yeah, Steve. I, I got to meet him. All of them, super cool dudes. They're like calculated guys. It's really like a, a I don't say it, it's chess, though. It, it, it really is with this brutality. So once you start to appreciate that, that I can understand how people go all in with this. For me, not only is that the case, but this is classic like 
1400s, 1300s, uh, two humans go inside of a cage here and just try to kill each other. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just, for some reason, I can never do it. I can never in a million years do it. But whenever I hear that two humans in 2020 are going to do that, like, I just, for some reason, go, yeah, I'm going to watch two humans attempt to kill each other in in a cage and, and it's going to be awesome. So I can understand that Dana White says the people that are diehards, they need, they deserve a little bit of a break in a relief during this incredibly trying time. And he probably feels a responsibility to them. By the way, just like they have helped him become where he is, mm -hmm. he probably feels a responsibility to pay them back. And I can respect that. And he did mention that the UFC is like one of the sports where he doesn't think it's really affected by fans not being there because then you actually get to hear like all the smack that the fighters are talking and yeah, like, <laughs> oh, no, whoa, whoa. <laughs> he was not budging though. I mean, Greeny asked him, hey, there's been rumors about, you know, you fighting on a possible tribal land in California. Can you speak on that? And Dana White responded, ESPN. It's on ESPN. The fight is on ESPN. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where it's at, Green. All right, just get to back to your little questions. Get back. I got five minutes. I'm missing this Tom Brady Howard Stern interview already. I love it. I like the Green you want for it, though. Yeah. Got it. Why not tell us where it's happening? Well, I would assume that at some point this could potentially cause a PR issue for old Dana White. Yeah. Because if it is on tribal lands, I would assume that, oh, so this guy is going around laws to make sure that, like, you know what I mean? There's just always something to happen. But he is a savage, so why would he yeah. care if anybody's... And he's already made his money, so... He probably just doesn't want the word out. Well, he doesn't yeah, want the someone will try and shut it down. Yeah. I asked the boys this yesterday, so this is something we won't be able to gamble on? Is that, that true? Well, that's oh, what we have to gamble I on. don't know, because... Maybe the one in the U.S., but the international ones aren't sanctioned by state gaming commissions, so I don't know. If oh, those so because nowadays, whenever there was the offshore betting sites, we worked with everybody worked with one and gambled with one at some point. Mm -hmm. If you're a sports gambler, you could put up prop bets up there for anything. I mean, we did a, a beat Pat McAfee series where we had humans gambling on me bowling, me shooting NBA threes, me playing Chuck E. Cheese. Ski ball. Ski ball. <laughs> I mean, we, we, were, we were able to set lines on anything. I mean, I was told, and I'm, I feel like I have pretty good – there was like $70,000 being bet on me rolling over a 130 or not in my mm -hmm. first game. We would go live. By the way, 177, best game I've ever had in my entire life. I think I had five straight <laughs> yeah. strikes at one point. There was a thought I was going to get a 300. I mean, it was it was the best. It was lights out, but it was like there was $70,000 gambled on that. The NBA thing, I think there was like 25, something like that. Nowadays, and I don't want to say those were the good old days, but it, now that it's become like – a much more mainstream thing. It's becoming legalized. There's obviously regulations because I could have thrown every one of those. Things. Oh yeah, I, I could have thrown every single one of those events if I wanted to. If I just wanted to roll the one, a one, I could have done that. And everybody that bet on the under, that's why it's hard to get the people to uh, place bets on the national anthem for the Super Bowl, even though it's such a highly talked about thing. It's hard to get regulators to okay that because Demi Lovato could have controlled that completely. You can anything that is controllable or throwable and it doesn't have regulations on it the regulators can't pass it now that it is legalized in america so those old days of being able to make prop bets on everything that you just can't do it anymore because it's a much more regulated business which by the way people are getting paid on time the, the bets are actually getting put through i mean there's like an entire thing it's getting better in a lot of ways but in those ways where you can just throw bets up there without it being regulated those days are but uh, as, far as, behind us i think as